Hello everyone, welcome back to Sukiyo's art channel. Welcome, I hope you enjoy the newest video. So basically, I attempted Inktober this year and uh, I've never done it before. And unfortunately, I was not successful at it, but I did try, which is what counts. I will try again next year because I did find the experience really interesting and challenging. So this was Inktober day one, this video, and I'm only uploading it now because like I said, um, I wasn't able, I think I managed to do four days in the end and I couldn't do the rest of the month, but because I'd already done the work and I've already made the videos, I thought I'd upload them anyway so you guys could see it. So these will not be official entries into the Inktober challenge uh, for this year, but they are videos that I'm uploading anyway to show you guys my work that were made for Inktober. Right, so Inktober day one, the theme was poisonous and I've got it written down on the paper as I'm sure you can see. And I didn't want to go with anything um, too cliche, too stereotypical, I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe loads of people thought of the same ideas that, that I did and I'm like congratulating myself and I have nothing to congratulate myself over. But I thought my idea was quite original, but maybe it isn't. And what I went with um, is this picture of two people kissing. Basically, these are supposed to be two people from Victorian times. And uh, you can't see it yet at this point because I'm still um, applying the color and it's not obvious yet. Now, um, I'm not an expert on subject matter, but I am led to believe that uh, makeup, and this has always been a problem with makeup in general, but makeup, especially in the Victorian times or, uh, you know, before now, used to be very heavily laden with heavy metals like uh, mercury, lead, arsenic, etc. And so um, apparently makeup these days still have uh, these elements in them and it's still a problem, especially in cheaper makeup. And I'm not talking about drugstore makeup, I'm talking about really cheap brands that you'll buy on Wish, for example, or other cheaper places. Um, so it's still a problem, but apparently in Victorian times and even before that, the heavy metal quantity used in this makeup products for women was quite high. And so what would happen is they would put the, the arsenic, the lead, the mercury, etc. Uh, into the rouge, the lipstick, I think the foundation that they used to use uh, to make their faces look paler had a really high quantity of arsenic. And so what would happen is a lot of these women would either, if they were using small amounts of makeup, their skin and bodies would get used to it and build up an immune system, but it would leave visible scars on the skin, which they would then try to cover with even more makeup, so it would have even more long-term lasting effects. But what would happen a lot is that the men who would kiss these women, they would suffer from death more often interestingly enough because they would kiss them and uh, the women who were practiced with wearing makeup and knew to be careful not to ingest it into their system would be more aware of this whereas the men would kiss them and the chemicals would remain on their lips and maybe then they would lick their lips or they would drink or they would eat something and the chemicals would be washed in with food and the drink etc and it would go into their systems and they would be poisoned and they would die and so um, when I was thinking of making this picture uh, I didn't want to go down the route of drawing animals or anything of the sort because people believe them to be poisonous but actually animals are venomous and I also didn't want to do anything like spells or potions or anything typical like that but the biggest reason why I did this is because I wanted to make people aware that this is something that still happens today. Companies still use these heavy metals in makeup. And it's not just in makeup, they put it into paints of all sorts, including the paints that we use to make paintings with, you know, oils and acrylics and etc. And they use it uh, in all kinds of uh, things. In fact, some reports have found that these heavy metals have been found in our drinking water, for example. And uh, elements like the ones I've mentioned, again, arsenic, mercury, lead, etc. They are naturally occurring. You can find them on the earth. 
but I think that there's a general system of belief in our society that if something is natural, in the sense that if something comes from nature or comes from the planet, that it's completely harmless and you can ingest it into your system. And this is actually not true. It is, um, it is a lie that we have been fed. Just because something is natural and is found in the earth doesn't mean that it's good for our system. It can be harmful and these heavy metals are a proof of that. And so people are trying to combat this now and, and trying to um, fight against these things. I'm going to leave a link to a particular article that I found online below if you want to learn more about this and I suggest you do your own research, you know, especially if you're a woman and you use makeup like most women do and you want to know how that could be potentially affecting your health and your skin. As I said before, I think the quantity used of these elements in makeup, if that makes grammatical sense, is probably not as high as it used to be, but it is still used. I only recently discovered this about paints and makeup, etc., and I was very shocked to discover it. And the, um, the effects that arsenic and mercury have on people and on the brain and on health is really, really dangerous and really bad. And I know this is not surprising, most people know this, but I knew these things were bad, but I didn't realize how bad they were until I started doing the research. So our skin has pores, I'm sure everyone knows this. And so when you place something on your skin, it does get absorbed into your system via the pores on your skin. So it's not just about what you eat, it's also about what you apply on your body and you want to make sure that you're not applying anything that is going to cause serious damage to yourself. So yeah, um, part of the reason why I did this picture was because I wanted to do something different, but also I wanted to make people aware of what's going on. It is a bit, you know, of a silly picture, it's a bit dramatic. She kisses him and the poison starts acting straight away depending on the poison or the quantity found in the makeup it might not act straight away it might not be so quick it might not be the case that he would kiss her and straight away he would die it might take a while for it to get ingested into his system start acting out but because i wanted to make the picture a bit dramatic um i wanted to show what was going on obviously it's a picture it's on a movie so i have to tell everything in one in one drawing I just thought I'd have it so she kisses him and the effects start manifesting themselves straight away and that's why it gets blue in the face and his eyes get tinged with red because they're bloodshot because the poison is, is fast acting basically. You might notice in the video I keep pulling up this little booklet if you will and that's because that's where I, I used that booklet to do a color chart for the colored pencils I was using and I kept referring to it uh, so I could mix the colors. That's why you keep seeing it. Uh, for those who are interested, the pencils that I'm using in this picture are called Boldemere. They're a brand by a shop here in the UK called The Works. They are exclusive to The Works. I bought them quite recently. I don't remember when. I did use the white uh, Prismacolor Light Fast Pencil because this collection, it's a box of 30 Voldemir color pencils. It didn't come with a white. But to be honest, the white pencil is one that's quite difficult to get right. So maybe that's better for blessing in disguise. So I ended up using the white Prismacolor Light Fast Pencil and it worked fine. I'm planning to do a review on these pencils, but this was the first time I was using them. And they're actually really nice for cheap pencils. I was impressed. So the pens that I used to ink this picture were the Mitsubishi Uni Pien Pin Fine Line Water and Fade Proof Pigment Ink Pens. So yeah, that, that's what I came up with for poisoners. Like I said, you can see the blue on his face now. I mean, I think this bit is a bit shiny, unfortunately. I don't know if it's because the lighting was placed in the wrong way. I don't know. I don't know if we moved the lighting or something or... I'm not sure what's going on here, to be honest. And I apologize for all the shininess. Um, that's not ideal, but there's nothing I can do about it. The point is, you can see, depending on the position of the book, that he's now got this blue on his face and his eyes have got red. And uh, the point is that she kisses him and the poison spreads to his lips and spreads into his mouth and, you know, into his bloodstream. 
And so the blue starts uh, cursing through his face from the lip area, from the mouth area, if you will, onto the cheeks, you know, onto the nose. And his eyes start getting blotchy red um, because the poison has taken effect. So it's a sad story. It's a tragic story. It's a tragedy. They're in love, but she kills him because of her makeup. <laughs> So yeah, thank you very much for watching guys. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed watching that as much and as I enjoyed making it. Please subscribe if you like my content. I promise you there's more coming up and it's all going to be great. It's all going to be fun. It's all going to be awesome. And uh, give it a like if you like this video. It helps my channel. It helps me want to produce content. And um, share it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your cats. You know, share it uh, with whoever you want. And yeah, just, just have fun. And I hope that you enjoy the experience. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome.